Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this Dell Inspiron M5030. Now these machines have plenty of problems. If you even look them up on Google, the top thing will probably be the seven beeps of death, as some people call it, and that means that something has gone wrong with the motherboard and its CPU. However, I was surprised how easy it was to fix that, as I actually received this machine because it had that problem. It wouldn't boot anymore, and it wouldn't do a darn thing. So, all I had to do, surprisingly, if you're looking for a solution to this problem, is first, turn it on, and then plug in the power adapter and wrap it up in your sheets that you have in your bed. Keep it there for probably 20 minutes, come back, and then force the machine to shut off by holding down the power button. At that time, you should go cool it down somewhere. I just put a fan on it and let it cool down with the screen open, of course, so you can cool it down a little faster. After that has happened, go ahead and plug it back in and turn it on. Voila! It works! I was surprised. I actually did that with this machine and it was fantastic. It works just fine now. However, believe it or not, the same thing happened again. So I did the same type of remedy, put it in the bed, let it sit there for a while, come back, and it works again. However, I now have a new problem, which is also a problem with these machines. The power jack for the power adapter is a piece of junk. You plug it in and it shorts out the power adapter, so something's wrong with the little port, and according to all the stuff that I've seen on the internet, all you have to do is replace that port, and I'm going to do some testing to see if that's what really the problem is. So basically, you cannot charge the machine. However, I do have just enough battery in this computer right now to do this review of this machine. But at a later date, I'm going to have to open it up and figure out what's wrong with the power adapter port on this machine. I don't know. These computers seem to have a lot of problems, but I seem to be able to fix them all and, well, here it's working. Anyway, enough of the problems of this machine. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more of the positives about it. This particular machine shipped in November of 2010. Inside, it has a AMD Athlon 2 processor running a 2.26 GHz, that being, of course, a dual-core processor. We have a 15.6-inch widescreen display with a resolution of 1366 by 768. Running the display is the ATI Mobility Radeon HD 4250 graphics with 256 megabytes of video memory. For RAM, we have the default that this machine shipped with, which is 3GB of DDR3 memory, and that seems to be okay with the operating system that is currently on it. This machine came with Windows 7, I believe Home Premium, but I now have upgraded that to Windows 7 Professional. I believe I did install 64-bit, and it works absolutely fine with 3 gigabytes of memory. Of course, you have to be a little bit patient, and you can, of course, upgrade it to a little bit more memory as well. I can't remember what the ceiling is, but um, that's what it has right now. When this machine was new, it came with a 320 gigabyte hard drive, I believe. However, when I received this machine, because it was broken, I let the person take out their hard drive, of course, to save their data. So, I installed a 160 gigabyte hard drive because I had one laying around, and that's enough space for this machine. We were actually using this machine as our uh, audio machine, which worked with our stereo system here at college, but ever since the power jack breaking, I took that out of service and put something else there to use for right now. Anyway, that's a little information about the machine, its problems, how to fix them, and the specs as well. Now, let's go ahead and take a look around. On the front of the machine, we will find some status indicator lights here on the left-hand side. We have the power indicator, hard drive, and status of the charging of the battery. We will also find down here an SD card slot, and we'll look a little bit more at that when we flip the machine over. Here in the center, we have our audio out and audio in. Kind of a weird place for it, but I guess it works. On the left-hand side of the machine, we will find our ventilation for the CPU here on the left-hand side. Next to that, we have our port for charging the machine, and that is what the current problem of this machine is. 
it just won't work. It seems to short out the power adapter and I've tried different power adapters. I have like three of them and I know they all work. So obviously there's something wrong with the port here. Next to that we have two USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet, VGA video out, and another USB port there on the end. On the right hand side of the machine we will find our DVD drive and the Kensington lock port. Taking a quick look at the back, there's a whole lot of nothing. Opening the machine up, we will find our 15.6 inch glossy display. Above that, we will find our webcam, and to the left hand side of that, we will find the microphone. Below that, we will find the Dell logo. Below the screen, we'll find our stereo speakers, one by each of the hinges. On the left hand side, we will find our power button. Of course, we have the keyboard in the center. And down below, we have our decent sized trackpad. On the bottom of the machine, we won't find much for access doors, and that's because you actually have to take off all those little screws that you see and pop off the top where the keyboard is. Then you can access everything inside that you may need to access. Believe it or not, it's not too hard to do. If you want to take off just the keyboard, all you have to do is unscrew these two screws and the keyboard pops right out. Then you can access the internal components. However, some you may need to take off the whole front and that's not hard to do you just take out the rest of the screws and it pops right off anyway at the top you can see we have our replaceable rechargeable battery in the upper right hand corner we have ventilation for the cpu down in the left hand corner we will find the screws for the hard drive and there's not really a hard drive caddy in this machine you just put the hard drive in there and these two screws hold it in place with the motherboard so that's nice if you are buying one of these machines that is working, well, you don't really need a caddy for it. All, just, all you have to do is just put in the hard drive and use the screws and screw it in, so that's nice. Over here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see we have an SD card slot. And it's kind of in a weird place, but hey, it works and it gets the job done. We just have a little blank in there, which usually comes with Dell machines. And that's just to keep dust and other debris out of the port. So let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, so we have a little bit of battery left on this machine. Let's go ahead and see how long it lasts. Here we go. Like I was saying earlier in the video, the power jack on this machine is broken. And uh, we have a power light here. However, we don't have any activity anywhere. Let's try again. There we go. I don't know what was wrong there. Okay, so we're loading right on up here into Windows 7 Professional. Like I was saying, this machine originally came with Windows 7 Home Premium, but uh, taking the hard drive out, I decided to just put Windows 7 Professional in it. And of course, that works perfectly fine. So I'm gonna see if I can set this camera up so it won't uh, have so many lines on it, or at least it won't move on you a hundred times. It's kind of hard to do there. That might be the best I can get it. Anyway, looks like we're still loading a little bit here. We did have the icons at the bottom and now they went away. We'll wait for them to come back because it's obviously still thinking in the background. We still don't even have the little icons down here in the corner other than the time and date. Of course, some machines take a little bit of time to load, but if you're patient enough and maybe walk away, get something to drink, you know, uh, get something that you wanted to snack on, whatever, maybe by the time you get back, it'll be done loading. So it's not too big of a deal.
So our icons are slowly coming back down there at the bottom. And the last one there is Spotify. Like I was saying, I use this machine as our music PC. It was connected to our stereo system downstairs. However, with it, uh, its power jack being broken, uh, I decided to take it out of service of that and put a different machine there. So anyway, it looks like we're uh, good enough here to start doing something. Let's go ahead and we'll click on Start. And we'll get a little look at the information of this machine. So, we can see here the processor. We have 3 gigabytes of RAM, which was the default size that came with this machine and eventually we'll get our system rating here too there we go we can see it's a four go ahead and click on that so here we can see uh, all the other uh, ratings of course this system was only available in Vista and 7 I don't know if it was available in Windows 8 but I do know it is gone in Windows 10. So we can see here the lowest thing is the graphics. However, for some reason, the 3D graphics is a little bit better. Interesting. Anyway, we'll go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at Firefox here. Now being Windows 7, Windows 7 is still up to date and fully supported uh, here in 2017, and it'll be fully supported until 2019. Sometime in 2019 it'll discontinue support from Microsoft and it won't get security updates or any type of updates at all. But for now Windows 7 is totally up to date and totally uh, uh, gets all of its uh, security patches and whatever else that Microsoft sends out it is still being supported in other words. So here we have Firefox. Let's go ahead and just see what version we're running here. Version 54 so, anything will work just fine on this machine. Let's go ahead and take a look at Lighting Gallery here. Just a nice basic web page. So, here we are. We can go ahead and scroll on down and everything loads nice and smooth and fast. Not a problem there. Of course, YouTube also works on this machine. And there we go, it loaded up uh, some of those things there. Of course, the ad hasn't loaded yet. But uh, we can scroll down here a little bit and uh, you can take a look at some of the videos. Of course, it takes a little bit for some of the thumbnails to pop up. If you're scrolling fast, I'm sure the advertisement is there. Yep, there it is, and it's playing just fine. Videos play just fine on this machine as well. Not a problem. So, YouTube and any other website that would, you know, work in today's day and age without any issue will work just fine here too, like Facebook and uh, uh, email, whatever. It all works just fine. Of course, Chrome is up to date as well. It's going to take a little time to load. But anyway, anything that I showed you on Firefox will work just fine here with Chrome. So, there it is. Works just as much, just as well. Here we have Office 2010. That works just fine on this machine too.
It's going to take it a little second here to come up. It certainly is taking its time. Maybe it uh, recently installed an update or something. And there it is. So everything is here just like the 2016 version, which is the newest version of Office. It just looks a little bit older, but works just the same. So anyway, as you can see here, we also had uh, Spotify and iTunes, and that's uh, some of the applications we used to uh, listen to music on our stereo, and they work for streaming music and listening to music absolutely fine. Not a problem there with either of those applications. Of course, you can run plenty of other things on this machine as well. As you can see here, we have some other applications, and they all work perfectly fine. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this little video of uh, seeing how well this Dell Inspiron M5030 works in 2017. Of course, it has plenty of problems from motherboards not working to power jacks not working to, I don't know, whatever else. Something else will probably start not working. But it's working now, and here it is. Anyway, once again, I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and also please comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.